In this video, you're gonna learn how to solve rational inequalities. So what exactly are rational inequalities? Well, rational means like a ratio, like a fraction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything on one side of the inequality, we're gonna set it to zero, and then we're gonna combine that quantity into one fraction. So if you have two fractions, like example number two, you're gonna to wanna to combine them into one fraction. And that, then we're gonna to proceed to go ahead and solve these inequalities. So I'll show you how this works. We're gonna go through three examples. Let's start with this first example. So the first thing is to get everything on one side, set it to zero. Then you factor the numerator and denominator as much as you can, and you set those factors equal to zero. So if we do that, x plus one equals zero, that means that x is equal to negative one. If we set x minus two equal to zero, that means that x is equal to two. Now we go to the number line, and we plot these numbers from lowest to highest, okay? And so what you wanna do is you want to look at this and you say, well, hmm, the denominator can never be zero because if the denominator is zero, that's undefined, right? So that means that x cannot equal two. This has to be an open interval, uh, an open um, circle, can't include two. The numerator, it can actually equal zero. So at negative one, this is gonna be a closed circle. See, we're trying to find out where this quantity is greater than or equal to zero. The numerator can be zero, but the denominator can never be zero. So the denominator is always gonna have an open uh, circle there. Now we're gonna do some test points in each of these three intervals. So let's go ahead and test negative two, zero, and three. So if I pick negative two, that would be negative two plus one, which is a negative one. So I'll just put a negative up here and a negative two minus two is negative four, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Whereas if I put zero in, zero plus one, that's positive, zero minus two is negative, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, and if I pick three, I get three plus one is four, which is positive, three minus two is one, which is positive, and a positive divided by a positive is a positive. Now we wanna find where it's greater than or equal to zero, meaning where it's positive or zero. So you can see that our solution here is gonna be from negative infinity to negative one, including negative one, and from two to infinity, not including two or infinity, because this is an open circle. Now, you might be saying, Mario, why does this work? Like, what is this all about? Well, you could graph this, okay? And if you graph it, what you'll find is that you have a vertical asymptote here at two, okay? and you have a horizontal asymptote here at the ratio of these coefficients, one over one, so this would look something like this. And if you graph this, this graph would look something like, like this, okay? Roughly like something like this, okay? And so what's interesting is you're looking for where this graph is greater than or equal to zero. So that means where is it above the x-axis? Well, you can see right here it's above the x-axis, right? And over here, it's above the x-axis. Uh, over here, it's below, right? So that's why we don't want to include the vertical asymptote in there. We just want to know where it's above the x-axis, meaning it's uh, uh, greater than zero or equal to zero. I could be right on the x-axis. So we're basically, what we're doing is we're taking a two-dimensional graph and we're analyzing it in one dimensional, uh, on a one-dimensional number line. So it just makes it a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Let's take a look at example number two. So for example number two, we're gonna subtract this quantity to get everything on one side and set it to zero. Then we're gonna get a common denominator. We're gonna to try to combine these into one fraction. So I'm gonna multiply this guy here by x minus three over x minus three. That's like multiplying by one. And this one we're gonna multiply by x plus one to the numerator and denominator. So if we do that, we get x minus 3, and then I'm going to treat this like a negative 2 and distribute the negative 2. That's negative 2x minus 2 all over our common denominator of x minus 3 times x plus 1, and that's all less than 0, right? So if we combine like terms here, we get negative 1x minus 5 all over x minus 3 times x plus 1, is less than zero. Okay, now we've got everything in terms of one fraction. It's factored. We're gonna set the factors to zero. So if I set negative x minus five equal to zero, I get negative five. 
Okay, so let's just write that down, negative five. If I set x minus three equal to zero, I get three, and if I set x plus one equal to zero, I get negative one. So we wanna plot them on the number line from lowest to highest. Remember, the denominator can never be zero, so at negative three and negative one, those are gonna be open, because you can't divide by zero, that's where our vertical asymptotes are gonna be. The numerator can be zero, but we're just looking for it's less than zero, not equal to zero. So at negative five, this would also be open. If this was equal to zero, then this negative five here would be closed. Okay, perfect. So now all we have to do is uh, pick some test points. So I'll pick negative six here in this interval. If I put negative six in, I get positive six minus five is one, that's positive. Uh, negative six minus three is negative nine, that's negative, and negative six plus one is negative five, that's negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive divided by a positive is a positive. So we'll just put a plus sign in this interval. If we check negative two, that's gonna give us uh, two minus five, which is negative three, so that'd be negative. Uh, negative two minus three is negative five, and negative two plus one is negative one, so we get a negative divided by a positive, which is a negative. And if we pick zero, let's see, we get uh, negative five, which is negative. We get negative three, which is negative. Zero plus one would be positive. A negative times a positive is negative. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And if we pick four, we get, let's see, negative nine, which is negative. Four minus three is one, that's positive. Four plus one is five, that's positive. So we get a negative divided by a positive, which is negative. And we're looking for where it's less than zero, meaning where it's negative. So that's gonna be right here and right here. So if we write our intervals, this is gonna be from negative five to negative one, and from three to infinity, not including the endpoints, because they're open. So that's gonna be our solution, and you got it. Let's take a look at one more example. See if you can pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, what did you get for number three here? We've got x squared plus x all over x squared minus four is less than or equal to zero. So. What do, you, uh, what do you do on that one? Well, if I was gonna do this one, the first thing I would do is I'd factor the numerator by factoring out a greatest common factor, and then we've got a difference of two squares in the denominator. And now that we have it factored, we're gonna set the factors equal to zero. So if we set x equal to zero, we're gonna get zero. If we set x plus one equal to zero and solve, we're gonna get negative one. We set x minus two equal to zero, we get two. And if we set x plus two equal to zero, we get negative two. Now we're gonna to go to the number line and we're gonna plot these from lowest to highest. So we're gonna say negative two, negative one, zero, and two. Remember the denominator cannot be zero. So at two and negative two, these are gonna be open. But the numerator, it can equal zero. So that's gonna be a closed circle at zero and negative one. Now we just have to check our intervals to see if it's gonna come out to a positive or a negative. So let's start over here with negative three, and then this will be negative 1.5, and negative 0.5, and one, and three. So if we plug in negative three, we would get a, we'll write it over here, we'll get a negative. Negative three plus one is negative two, we get a negative. Negative three minus two is negative five, we get a negative. Negative three plus two is negative one, we get a negative. So a positive divided by a positive, is gonna give us a positive. And negative 1.5 now, let's see, we would get a negative. Negative 1.5 plus one would give us a negative. Negative 1.5 minus two is a negative. Negative 1.5 plus two is a positive. So we're getting a positive over a negative, which is a negative. If we do negative 0.5, we get a negative. Negative 0.5 plus one is a positive. Negative 0.5 gives us a negative. Negative 0.5 gives us a positive, so we're getting a negative over a negative, which is a positive. And if we pick one, let's see, we're gonna get a positive, positive, one minus two is a negative, one plus two is a positive. So we're getting a positive over a negative, which is a negative, and if we pluck three in, we get, uh, let's see, we get a positive, 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 so a positive divided by positive is a positive. We want to know where it's less than or equal to zero, meaning where it's negative or zero. So you can see that our intervals here are going to be from negative two to negative one, including uh, negative one, and then from zero, including zero, uh, to two, not including two. So that would be your uh, answer in interval notation. 
and you got it. So great job if you're able to get that one. If you want to see uh, some more examples, check out a previous video I did on the same topic, rational inequality solving, and that video right there. So follow me over there. We'll get some more practice, and uh, I'll see you there.